blessing to you. We really appreciate your financial support because Lord knows we need it. Um, but having said that, there's a couple of ways that you can give. We have an app called Tithely. It's an extremely secure app. You can download it on your cell phone. And just make sure when you go to the app and you give, put in Pacific Coast Ministries. Don't just, you know, put the money in and click because it'll go God knows where. So make sure you put Pacific Coast Ministries. You can also go to our website, PacificCoastMinistries.com, and on the home page in the top, you'll see where it says give, and you can go that route as well. But either way, we truly appreciate your giving, and we appreciate our partners out there that's been supportive towards this ministry, and it's just, it's just a blessing. And I don't know if you know this or not, but there's still a lot of churches uh, that are really suffering and trying to recover from this COVID that has really strapped us. Um, and we're one of those. But I thank God we've, been, we've managed to keep our head above water financially, and that's because of your prayers and your giving. So thank you again. So having said all of that, let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the uh, monies we're about to receive. We pray what we receive will be used in a mighty way to help build your kingdom. And Father, we pray for those that gave. And we just pray uh, for those that didn't give but had the willingness to give. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to continue as well as conclude our series on running the race to win the prize. Uh, before I read the scripture, just to, be, just to kind of recap and make sure you understand the setting, because I've always said it's important to understand whenever you read God's word, you understand uh, when it was written, uh, why, uh, when it was written, who it was written to, and why it was written. The first thing is Paul was under house arrest, and um, there was a, one of the leaders at the uh, church in, in, in Philippi by the name of Aphroditus. Had they've taken up a, a, a love offering for Paul, and and also the word that was going on in their in their church at the time, and the church. The Philippian church consisted of mostly a retired military people. So what they did was they sent Ephroditus, Ephroditus on his way to, to meet uh, Paul at, remember, Paul's under house arrest. And house arrest at that time, you uh, had to be chained to a Roman guard 24-7. Can you imagine being chained to Paul 24-7? If you don't know Jesus, you will know him. And by the way, a lot of the guards in the in the uh, how, in, in the uh, p palace was converted because of what happened to Paul being under house arrest. But that's for another day. So he gives word. They get the love offering to help support the ministry. He gives word. Aphrodite that is to Paul how what's going on in the church, and Paul is just he's just he's just thrilled that even though he's lost his freedom, there were those that were still thinking about him and those that were still supporting him. Because keep in mind, there were those that said, we got your back, Paul, and they deserted him. So he was really happy about this. So this is one of these letters that Paul was just enthusiastically writing to the church. And having said that, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 through 16, and of course I'm reading, reading out of the NIV version, it reads as follows. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us, then, who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I pray that as I break the bread of life that you'll teach and preach mighty through me. And as you do this, those that are here, those that are watching, those that are listening, will be helped and will be encouraged so that we can all be the very best we can be for you. Father, we pray and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, my subtitle was Striving for perfection. Again, the title is Running the Race to Win the Prize. And Paul uses this, metaphorically speaking, the Olympic Games, uh, letting his audience know how important it is to
to, 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 win the, uh, to win the race, to fight the good fight. We know as Christians, we have engaged, figuratively speaking, in a marathon. It is not a sprint. It is a lifelong commitment that we make to God. Amen. And having said that, we talked about striving for perfection. That was the subtitle last week. We talked about stay the course, how important it is to stay the course. Then we talked about uh, uh, be a person of integrity, how so important that it, that actually is. And Lord knows we're losing a lot of that now. And then we also talked about loving your neighbor, the importance of love. The very essence of God is love. But today we're going to conclude our series and using the um, a subtitle, uh, being committed to God. Being committed to God. Wherever there is commitment, true commitment, it must be accompanied with sacrifice. Period. When we commit to God, when we become Christians and accept Christ in our life as our personal Savior, believing that he died on the cross and rose from the dead for us, and then we make a commitment to serve God as long as we are living, it must come with some form of sacrifice. And unfortunately, there are a lot of people today who want commitment, but they're not willing to sacrifice. But when you make a commitment to God, you have to sacrifice. And the sacrifice usually comes with oneself. Because oftentimes, we don't want to make commitments to a situation because all we're thinking about is who? Ourselves. Jesus said that we must deny ourselves pick up our cross and follow him. When we became Christians, we became the bride, the, the church. And then the Bible tells us that Jesus is the bridegroom, so we are spiritually married to Christ. And when you get married, there is a, a commitment that must take place. And in the midst of that commitment, there are sacrifices that must go on. When you get married, there's got to be commitment. When you, uh, when you have been blessed with a job or career, however you want to put it, you got to show some commitment. And sometimes when you have com uh, I'm sorry, uh, commitment, you got to exercise sacrifice. And sometimes the sacrificing is difficult. How many of you get up every morning if you work early in the morning, you get up you don't want to get up? But if you don't get up, what's going to happen? You're going to be late to work. Amen? And you keep, be, you keep being late to work, what's going to happen? You're going to lose your job. Commitment. All of us as believers in Christ have been given a task by God. And it's our responsibility as, as Christians to commit to the task at hand and to make the necessary sacrifices that we need to make. Now keep this in mind. In order to be successful in life, you must be committed to God. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3, it says, commit to the Lord whatever you do and your plans will succeed. The reason you find, I'm talking to the saints, not the ancients right now, the reason you find a lot of Christians that are having difficult times, continuously, because it rains on the just and the unjust. No one goes through life without challenges. That's inevitable. But you'll come across those who are constantly having issues. And one must ask themselves, am I being committed to God? Or am I being committed to what I want to do? God is going to get his way one way or another, with or without us. So we might as well just do what God has ordained us to do. 
if God has blessed you with a family, he ex expects you to be committed to your family, committed to your wife, committed to your husband, committed to your children if you have them. Again, it goes back. I get really irritated with folk when the first time they get mad about something, they're crying divorce. That just irritates me. How in the world are you going to be married to someone you tell them you want to spend the rest of your life with them and you're willing to die for them, and the first time something doesn't go right, you're talking about you crying divorce. No matter what your endeavors in life may be, it's always going to be a sacrifice. It's going to be a challenge. You may have a job that you may not be 100% satisfied with, but in the meantime, you need to be committed to that job and do what you're supposed to do. You may be struggling with some health issues, the things that have just got you down, but you need to be committed to do what you can to help yourself get through what you're going through. You may be struggling in your ministry. You may be coming up against things in your ministry, but if you stay committed, you'll get through it. But in the ministry, in family, in health, on your job, comes sacrifice. And there's a lot of people that want commitment, but they just simply don't want to make any sacrifices. And that's something that we have to do. God wants us to be committed to him. Now, the Bible does not tell us that we're not supposed to just the heck with everybody else. I'm going to follow the Lord. No, we follow God absolutely, but God puts things in place. And we have to have a balance in our lives and do what God has ordained us to do and use some what is known as common sense and balance. But we have to be committed. And you have to understand the enemy is out to devour and to destroy. Satan wants to destroy us. Why? Because God loves us. And he will oftentimes put obstacles in our way, in our, in, in, our, in our travels, to get us off track. But we have to stay committed. And the part that's really challenging, ladies and gentlemen, is oftentimes Satan will use those that are closest to our heart to get us off track. That's why we have to be committed to God and make the necessary sacrifices that we need to make. And some of the sacrifices that we have to make may not be all bad. As a pastor, there are some things that I would love to do, but I don't do. I made, I made, many years ago, I made a decision that I'm going, to make ex, I'm going to make certain sacrifices because the place that God has put me in and the area in my life spiritually, I can't be hanging out at certain, with certain folk and doing certain things and like I used to do. Not, you know, going to the club. Spanky, come on, somebody. Now, again, don't get me wrong. You guys go to the club, dance, and have a good time. Hey, God bless you. But it ain't going to look very good with Pastor Carter in there. You know, y'all stop laughing. I know y'all looking at me laughing. You know, cutting a rug. I got a big medallion hanging on my cut called... Uh, Pastor C, and I'm doing the funky chicken, the penguin, or whatever. I'm tearing it up in there, right? And, and it, it just, it's not a good look. So I just don't, and sometimes God will have you in a situation where you're not going to be comfortable. I remember many years ago, uh, before, I, this is God, 35 some odd years ago, right before I started, before God called me to preach, well, actually, he was calling me then. I used to go to the clubs with my buddies and have a good time. Dancing, laughing, drinking, enjoying, typical all-American kind of guy. And the more I start getting into God's word, the more uncomfortable I began to feel. Now, let me be clear. Don't, um, don't come to me talking about, well, I can't, you know, I, I, I can't go and have fun at the club. No, I'm not saying that. But I'm talking about what God did to me. And it got to the point to where I would sit there and I would see people dancing, having a, having a great time. And, um, and then in my mind, I'm thinking, man, what are people having this kind of great a time serving God? Then it got to the point where I just did not feel comfortable going to the club anymore. 
I'm talking about me. My point is that sometimes God will put situations in your life to make you feel uncomfortable. You know what? This is a thing of the past. You can't go down that road anymore because you're going to be a light. You're going to be an example. People are going to look up to you. And the last thing you want is to be a stumbling block in anybody's life. Now, none of us are perfect. Don't, don't get me wrong with that one there. But the point I'm trying to make is there's certain sacrifices one needs to make. Sometimes as a pastor, you deal with people in, in, in the church. And, and if you deal with people, whether it's in the church or whether if you're dealing with the public, it could be a challenge. And you want to say things you know you got no business saying. You want to say them, but you can't say them because you know it's not the right thing to do. There are sacrifices that you have to make when you're committed to serving God. There are areas that God will send you where you may not want to go, but you've got to make the necessary sacrifices to go. And what separates, spiritually speaking, the men from the boys are those who are willing to commit and do what God has ordained them to do and those that find excuses not to do what God has ordained them to do. My question to you, how committed are you to God? Are you one of those that the first time something pops up that doesn't go right, you, you throw in the towel and you just give up? You have problems uh, with, with your uh, health, you just want to just give up? You have problems with your, on your job, you just want to quit? You got problems in relationship, you just want to throw in the towel? Problems with your children, problems with your marriage? You just say the heck with it? People that with that mentality are people that are very unstable. And there's some of you watching me right now, you fit that category. But the good news is you can get past that if you want to. But you're going to have to want to. You can't go that route making excuses, blaming everybody, and not taking responsibility. Because time is precious. We are living in perilous times, and people are dying every day, going straight to hell. And you could be someone's last hope in finding Christ. Instead of we being so caught up in ourselves as opposed to being caught up into what God would have us to do, things aren't going right. And if you fit that category, you may be mad at me now, but you know your life isn't going right. And I got bad news for you. It gets worse. But if you commit to God and go down the road God has you to go down you'll be alright and again that comes with sacrifice period comes with sacrifice I'm talking about running the race to win the prize and being committed to God well what is being committed to God entail that's the $64,000 question you'll find in your notes the first thing is be faithful to the task God has given you. Be faithful to the task that God has given you. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 25, verses 23, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. This, this is what Jesus was talking about. God is not going to give you the big things if you cannot handle the small things. It's the little things that God is looking at. Not just the big things, but the little things. When the eyes are not on you, how are you dealing with a situation? We have to be faithful. God has blessed you with a wonderful family. Are you being faithful to your family? Are you being a faithful father? Are you being a faithful mother? It's sad. I, I see uh, grandparents today. There's so many grandparents that are having to raise their grandchildren because the parents don't want to be bothered. And it's amazing. They don't want to be bothered, but the first time 
They don't want to be bothered. And in the meantime, the grandparents, you got to take care of the kids. You got to make sure there's food on the table. You got to make sure there's clothes on their back. You got to make sure they're getting the tender love and care that's needed. And, and, and the parents are nowhere to be found. The only time they're to be found if they want to, it's like they look at their child like a pet. They're not there raising the kid, dealing with all the stuff the, kid has got, the kids go through. They don't want to be committed. They want to live their own lives, do, do their own thing. And this is happening more and more and more. We as men and women of God have to learn to be faithful to the task that God has given us. If he's given you a family, then you, you be faithful to that family. You do the best you can. Now, obviously, situations can come up where it's so bad, it's time to move on. I, I've said this before. I make no bones about it. If somebody's beating the you-know-what out of you, you don't, need that, you don't need to be in that kind of relationship. You need to seek help. First, get out of that and get some help. Get some counseling. You don't stay in an abusive relationship. But some have, have, oh, don't get me started here. Some of you will sit there and say, well, yeah, he, he, he's, he or she is verbally abusive to me. Uh, yeah, yeah, he called you a knucklehead. Oh, he just abused me. Stop it. There are always insinuating circumstances, but by and large, I'm talking about when things don't go right and you just throw in the towel. You have to learn to work through them through the help of the Holy Spirit. Be committed. You have a job and you're in that job and you got a boss that is a knucklehead. You pray for that boss, and, you know, and just pray for the him or, or, or him or him or her. And try to keep your distance as best you can, and you pray for them, and you do the best you can. And I promise you, in the long run, it's going to work out. But you got to be faithful to what God has given you. If God has given you a ministry, you need to be faithful in your ministry. You're going to have ups and downs in the ministry. It's amazing how everybody wants to be a pastor. I'm amazed. Everybody wants to be a pastor. All they see is the person behind the pulpit preaching, and yet the people may be excellent orators, but they have no clue of 90% of, of, of the other stuff that go on that the pastor's got to deal with. It's no accident you got a whole lot of pastors that have having to take medication because their nerves are shot. It's no accident you got a lot of pastors that are just, I'm done with this, and walk away from the pastorate. Google it. It's real. It's a tough life. It's not easy. It, it's, it's, we don't have a whole lot of drama in our church, thank God. But man, it's still not easy because you're dealing with people and their issues. I've always said this. People come to church, they all got issues and problems. And when you're doing what God says do, you're going to run into those kind of issues and problems and you're going to have to make some sacrifices so that you can deal with those issues and problems and deal with it in a way where it's not going to drag you down. Amen, somebody. I'm talking about be committed to God. I use myself as an example. God called me the pastor. I did, even though I was reluctant, I didn't want to do that. Y'all, I don't want to go through the story. I don't want to be bothered with that. But I did it. Here I am. Over 30 years later, Big head, bald head, got a little gut on me. But through the years, I stayed committed. And God has blessed me. And I thank God for him. Be faithful to the task God has given you. What task has God given you? Do you have a family? Are you being working that out well? In your church, are you being committed to your church to do what you can to, 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 to help build the kingdom of heaven? 
or you're acting silly and well I, you know you want to use God as a spare tire and here God has blessed you with all kind of talents and, and gifts where the church can really use can use your support and your help and yet uh, then you get caught up in the Kodak moment, I call it. You, you, you get all emotional. Oh, yes, I want to do this. Oh, yes, I want to do that. And when a show and tell time comes, you're nowhere to be found. And then when you do show back up, I'm, I, this don't happen in our church. It happens in those other churches. Be clear about that. When you do show up and you find that someone has stepped up to help, then you get mad, have the audacity to get mad, Because you think the world's going to stop and wait on you. No. Be faithful what God has given you. Be faithful to the task God has given you. The second point I want to make here is don't give up. Don't give up. I know it's hard. I know it's tough whether you're dealing on your job, whether it's with your finances, whether it's with your family, whether it's in your ministry, your health, whatever it is, I know it's not easy, but you just can't give up. You have to fight the good fight. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, Paul said, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Listen to me. When you're doing what thus saith the Lord, and you're doing the right thing, you're going to get burned. That's inevitable. That's, that's going to happen. People are going to take advantage of you. Now, as time goes on, you learn to like, you know what, I know not to go down that road again, but I'm not going to allow someone, because someone that went behind my back and I've helped them and did everything I could to help them behind closed doors, but yet they openly come out and start speaking ill about me and, and other, oh, I, I ain't helping nobody ever again. Uh-uh. Don't do that. You're going to get burned. Just be prepared for it. But no, that's when you're building your treasures in heaven. Now, again, you don't want to purposely do things, I want, I want to get burned so I can build my treasure. No, you honestly do what is right, what God has laid upon your heart. And when you've been mistreated, misused, and abused, God is going to handle that. But you don't let that person's actions keep you from continually doing what God has pressed upon your heart to do. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's recap it. We're going to tie this thing off here. I'm talking about running the race to win the prize and being committed to God. And we know being committed to God takes sacrifice. And sacrifice, will be, there will be success. The first thing is, what does being committed to God entail? Be faithful to the task God has given you. We got that. The second point was don't give up. Fight the good fight. And last but not least, the Lord will fight your battles. He's going to fight your battles. The Bible tells us in Psalms chapter 55, verse 22, it says, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. God's got your back. In closing, I want to leave this with you. I'm talking about running the race to win the prize. We're all in this race together. And as we're running this race, again, we have to pace ourselves. And understand there may be times when fatigue starts to kick in when you're running a race. I shared this last week. You're going to tend to do things uh, uh, that you wouldn't normally do when you're running a race. I, you know, you get really fatigued. You tend to trip up and fall if something is an obstacle in your way and you didn't see it. What am I saying? Life's pressures can come upon you in a way where it can make you fatigued, spiritually fatigued. But that's when we have to get rejuvenated with the Holy Spirit. The renewing of the Holy Spirit. And we do this through prayer, through fasting, through studying his word. He'll sustain you. He'll pull you through. God's not going to set you up to fail. He wants you to succeed. Again, I'll say it once. I'm going to say it again. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in perilous times. God doesn't need any of us, but he wants to use us. 
But in order for us to be successful into doing what God would have us to do, we must be committed to the task that God has for us. We must be committed to him. Amen? Amen. Listen, I hope what I shared with you today was helpful to you and that you'll learn from it and that you'll grow. But there might be some of you out there that you've heard the message, but you, you really don't know Christ for yourself. You've heard of Christ, but you've never accepted Christ in your life as your personal Savior. The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, you shall be, what? Saved. If you want to do that this morning, I want you to pray this prayer with me as I pray. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner and I have fallen short. Come into my heart, come into my life and have me to be the person you intended for me to be. Father, I love you and I praise you. I believe that your son died on the cross for me and rose from the dead for me. Forgive me of all the wrongs I've ever done. Lead and guide me so that I may be committed to you, Father. I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer, praise God. The Bible says the angels are rejoicing in heaven even as I speak. The next thing you want to do is you want to um, understand that you have embarked upon a, again, a marathon. It's not a sprint. So it is incumbent upon you to pace yourself, spiritually pace yourself. The first thing you want to do in this race is you want to get you a good study Bible. Now, we use the NIV version, but whether it's the NIV version or the King James version or the New King James or whatever it is, make sure it's a study Bible, okay? That, it breaks things down a little easier for you. Also, I would suggest that you start reading in the Gospel of John. That's a good place to start to learn as much as you can about Christ. The next thing you want to do is get plugged into a Bible teaching church where you feel comfortable. Don't go to a church where you're merely a number. Go to a church where you're going to feel comfortable and there's some level of accountability. Now, you may have to visit several different churches, but you want to find a church that the Holy Spirit is pressing upon your heart to be a part of. If you're local, we'd love to have, have you here. But this might not be your cup, cup of tea. That's okay. <clears throat> but you need to find somewhere. You don't want to be one of those that's out there um, doing your own thing, saying, I don't need the church, all this. No. The Bible said, do not forsake the fellowship. The reason for the church, ladies and gentlemen, is so that we can come together as a body in Christ and give God the praise to learn, to be challenged, and to encourage one another because everybody's going through challenges. People don't have to know what you're going through, but at least you'll have a covering, spiritual covering, and people could be praying for you where you may be able to connect with certain people in the church that like you can confide in and talk to them and give you encouragement and vice versa. You can do the same for someone else. That's why we come to church. Just think about, I don't need to go to church. That's, that's ludicrous. You don't want to do that. Jesus went to the synagogue. It is well documented. Regularly. Now, if Jesus can go, uh, he didn't go to church, he went to the synagogue, why he died for the church, why can't you come and be a part and help build the kingdom of heaven and use the talents and gifts that God has given you? So find a good Bible teaching church. The next thing you know, you want to get baptized. If you've never been baptized before, uh, you want to get baptized. Being baptized doesn't get you saved. That's already done through your confession. Being baptized is an outward, is an outward, <clears throat> I'm going blank here is an outward confession of an inward conviction and feeling. So you want to get baptized. Amen? Amen. Okay, I think I've covered everything. I pray what I shared here today was helpful to you. Listen, I love you guys. Again, if you're local, I want to encourage you to come and, and fellowship with us and all my brothers in Ghana. I love you. I miss you guys. I hope everything's going well. That's kind of like my second home in Uganda. All of you there, I love you, I miss you. And um, from my Ghanaians, I'm sorry for using my left hand. I know some of you are smiling if you're watching me now. That's kind of, I don't want to go into detail about that, but um, 
I love you. And for all of you around the country, thank you so much for your prayers. Continue to pray for us as we pray for you. Amen? Let's close it out. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the message that was given. We thank you for those that may have given their lives to your son, to you, to your son, Jesus Christ, and that you lead and guide them and strengthen them. Lord, <clears throat> we pray, Lord, that um, as we go forth, that you lead and guide us. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Until next Sunday, may God richly bless you and yours.